Hey there, folks. Welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today, we're finally going to be talking about the newest album from JPEG Mafia called All My Heroes Are Cornballs. I don't think JPEG Mafia is interested in making this easy. See, if he was, he probably would have followed his controversial breakthrough, Black Ben Carson, by leaning into the politically charged, internet-rooted aggression and commentary that shocked so many people, especially given how well it was balanced with some real self-reflection. But that's not really what his 2018 follow-up veteran was. Oh, the commentary was still mostly there, but sliced to ribbons along the way, showing an increasingly fragmented, almost stream-of-consciousness approach to his bars and production that was certainly experimental, but didn't quite pack the same impact for me as the more tightly composed moments. Certainly inventive and challenging, and any insight I was able to glean did stick to my memory, but even being late to that party by over a year, I found myself wishing that I liked that project a lot more than I did. And thus, when I heard that All My Heroes Are Cornballs was continuing down a similar rabbit hole, with JPEG Mafia seemingly very much aware that his new album might disappoint fans looking for more of the provocation, even as the buzz suggested he was looking to embrace more melody and singing, hell, I was at the very least intrigued, so I figure I'd be a little bit more on the ball with this and dig into the project. I'm still late, but not that much, so what did JPEG Mafia put out here? Well, you know... JPEG Mafia has made the statement in his press run a number of times that fans will be disappointed with this album. And while on the one hand, I get some of the semi-trolling provocation that's coming in that statement, but I also understand it. If you were expecting him to eventually double down on the chaotic explosive bangers that were his live hallmark, All My Heroes Are Cornballs is not really that album. Kind of more's the pity, given how much of a knack he's got for it. But all the same, after giving this album comfortably over a dozen listens, I am confident in saying that I'm also not really disappointed with this either. But that's also because I had different expectations going in, as he just continued to follow in the wake of what he set up on Veteran into a more fragmented, textural experience. And as such, while I appreciate and respect what he's doing, a lot of my opinion on this album is kind of analogous to Veteran. I like it, but I don't really love it, and I don't see it as an album that I will revisit frequently. Definitely very good, but I can't quite call it great, especially for me. Now, with that acknowledgement, if you're going and looking at individual tracks or anything beyond moments that stand out, or even lyrical themes that are firmly anchored in the text, you are in for a messy situation. Most because JPEG Mafia is not structuring his bars to be viewed as a consistent arc or narrative. And I'd argue it's not even random enough to feel like a stream of consciousness so much as burrowing into his scattershot creative process, where certain motifs will slide to the forefront again and again. And while it would be easy to just paint this as an after effect of immersing in that sort of internet-driven meme culture, there isn't that brand of ironic detachment or deeper undercurrent of nihilism that has colored his previous work. I mean, for lack of better words, it feels more earnest and human. Many pieces punctuated by awkward, half-formed conversations with a woman woman or some other partners in a haze of weed smoke, with the equivalent of production notes left in the mix to color the misshapen picture as he tries to stabilize the song. And that's important to highlight. Yes, in the snapshots of rapping, we get JPEG Mafia's howling, aggro, furiously left-wing side with where his skill set really does shine through, but that's only one facet of who he is. And this album is more looking to present a more complete picture, flaws and all. Hell, one of the more stark examples is how he refocuses on his past as a veteran on grimy waifu and PTSD, where said waifu is actually referring to his gun as a metaphor and the pathological relationship that he will build with the weapon as a soldier, which leads directly into the mental hell in which he's barely coping on PTSD. Hell, even between some of the bars and the repeated focus on internet trolls that he knows could never confront him, we see a reflection of his sensitivity that he still cares about those goons despite his fame, of the guy who unironically will compare himself to a member of 98 Degrees and own it, confess his love of the Backstreet Boys, a more complex picture of his brand and masculinity that blows apart the subtle performative conformity that 
even Channers are expected to show online. Many have highlighted that he's supposedly rapping from an outright feminine perspective on songs like Thought Tactics, or from his frequent tagline, You Think You Know Me, but I'd also argue more it's adapting feminine coding to paint a more nuanced picture of himself. Same with the dejected but really honest fear of laying down features when they might recontextualize to mean something that isn't him, or so many keyboard strokes and mouse clicks that are punctuated across songs to highlight his own deflective screen. Or how I'll make Basive Bitch Tear Gas, which is a warped cover of TLC's No Scrubs that nevertheless feels earnest and somehow works in its own way. Appreciative of how the song's pop structure can still transcend his contortion. Or let me put it another way. When he titles an album, All My Heroes Are Cornballs, and Truth is probably just as affectionate and knowing as it is denigrating. And I respect that. And yet, for as much as I can appreciate this project as a whole, as a real textural experience, all JPEG Mafia's gleeful subversion of archetypes and challenging his fans' expectations surrounding politics, race, sexuality, gender, I'm still not quite as gripped by this project as I would like to be. And I'd argue a lot of it comes down to the execution, similar to many of my frustrations with Earl Sweatshirt's Some Rap Songs, or even with JPEG Mafia's own veteran from last year. Yeah, the wild, borderline, jazzy juxtaposition between his cracking, crooning, and howling bars. It encapsulates his themes and his message, especially whenever the production emphasizes so much of that contrast, as it really does well, but it's also strewn in pieces across a project that's got no real sense of momentum. Which, yes, I know, it's part of the point structurally, but it's hard for me to escape from how more composed pieces could cut more deeply. Similar case to how certain anti-hater and anti-blogger messages are hammered again and again, because while the repetition has a point in highlighting another dimension of his own insecurity post-fame, especially against a music industry that he doesn't remotely trust that makes all his money on retail, but he will be mercenary enough to exploit it if they'll give it to him. That's kind of what capitalism requires him to do. The stronger subtext never quite reinforces the text as deeply as I would like. And that's not even touching on the tracks that, if I were more cynical, I'd just say are just fragments of Peggy just fucking around here for, left for their own sake. And they don't really add up to more than the sum of their parts, like Life's Hard, Here's a Song About Sorrel, or Buttermilk Jesus type beat, especially given how this album naturally kind of meanders given this structure. Now this takes us to some of the singing, often assisted with a splash of auto-tune, and while I become accustomed to this style thanks to acts like Brockhampton, and can accept the sloppiness because of the broader framing of the project and the experimental flourishes, I'm also not gonna lie and say that the singing's a strong suit or that it always works, it can crack at some awkward points. But that's a similar observation I make about many of the compositions here. I like BBW for its shuddering brittleness and the warping burble of thought tactics and how it somehow fuses a fractured trap beat together even as the song sounds constantly like it's about to fall apart. Or how Free the Frail is the communal Brockhampton ballad off of buzzing synth shutters that I'm not at all surprised that Peggy finally made. Or how even the title track has exactly the sort of cascading, gleaming progression that shambles into a fast food order, but I gotta wonder if other fragments felt more developed or didn't yank themselves into completely different vibes, if they could actually feel like fully composed songs if they would hit harder for me. The glassy shatters against the kaleidoscope of voices and guitar on Jesus Forgive Me, I Am A Thought is a big example of this. Same with the grainy click against the flickering sample on beta male strategies, and some of the whiplash transition away from a pretty fuzzed out ballad on Rap Grow Old and Dive X No Child Left Behind. Hell, even in the blunt provocation of the final song, Poppy, I Missed You, with some of the most uncompromising and political bars on the entire album, and then it slides toward faded atmosphere and incomprehensible vocal snippets that might serve to accentuate his loneliness, spitting this into an electronic void, but it can also feel kind of dampening on a message that was missed and now perhaps even left aside. It's ambiguous, and I'll give Peggy some credit for that, but... Not a ton. I'm not sure I would have ended the album that way. But as a whole, look, this is one of those projects that actually rewards a lot of repeat listens, if only to sink into the blur of textures and pictures that JPEG Mafia puts forward. He has certainly improved vastly as a producer in composing that vision, and the fact that a picture like this and that's this fragment that doesn't feel badly produced or reliant on lo-fi trickery or muddiness shows how he has evolved as an artist in a really big way. And again, I can appreciate how JPEG Mafia is creating this vision and the layers of insight that he puts forward. I just wish I could be as 
emotionally gripped by the entire project as I am with the pieces of it. I can respect it without really loving it, which is why I'm giving it a very strong 7 out of 10 and a recommendation, but also a bit of a qualified one. If you're going in expecting the raw, provocative bangers, well, the provocation is there, but of a different stripe, so be prepared for that. Otherwise, I cannot help but respect how JPEG Mafia has lasted and carved his niche thus far. A lot of other experimental acts in this lane burn out quickly. And you know what? Even if I don't love it, I definitely want to hear more. So yeah, check it out. Good stuff. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. I know it took me a while to get to this, but this is one I want to do justice and delve in at length. And even then, I feel like there's pieces that I'll discover with every listen. So hey, if you want to buy or stream it, link's down there below. And I got the poll up there. I am curious where you all fall on this. I know a lot of you really love it, but I also know some might be disappointed. Hey, Peggy called it out. Beyond that, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. And if you're looking for the newest episode of Billboard Breakdown or other reviews, I put out a particularly incendiary one yesterday. Links are over in the card right over there. But till then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.